Corey Frampton and his daughter, who does all kinds of coins too. If you remember Allie Frampton, we've been videotaping since, oh uh, gosh, more than 10 years ago. Now she's blossomed into a fine young lady and she's following the numismatic tradition. And how about this young lady behind you? Oh! What's it like having a daughter that's involved in numismatics? Uh, she's having a great time. She's a, a sophomore at ASU in the business college right now and comes down on the weekend and is learning about all kinds of different parts of this. And yeah, I don't know, do you think we can get her over here to say a little something to you? You wanna? <laughs> Allie, it's, it's, you've grown up to be a fine young lady. Tell me what it's like continuing a numismatic tradition. Well, um, I just got here just trying to help them out. just fun seeing everybody, so I'm having a great time so far. Why do you still per continue numismatics? Probably just to get to see everybody. It's fun catching up and saying hi and seeing him in action, selling his coins and stuff. So. And what are you studying in school? And what, in, are, what year are you in? So I'm a sophomore at ASU. I'm studying business entrepreneurship. How old are you now? 19. When was the first interview we did with it, with you? Is it 2015? 2015, I think. Yeah. Or maybe longer than that. I was yeah. pretty small, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay, she's and, uh, she's here looking forward to, to one of the talks tomorrow. She's yeah, got a, I'm going to watch Peter's talk tomorrow. I took an archaeology class at school, so it's a lot of fun to listen to his stories. What type of entrepreneurship do you hope to do? You know, I've yet to figure that out, but I really like the basics of it. It's showing me everything in all the fields. It's kind of like a sum of all the different things. So, yeah, it's fun. Do you have a couple of cool coins you can show us? Uh, maybe. Let me see. Dad? What do we have here? Okay, here we have a 10 peso note that Pancho Villa created. That uh, uh, was used during the, the revolution, revolutionary period. They called them Villa's bed sheets because they were so large. That was the one of the names for them. And this is one's in pretty good shape. This this note is like a it's like a seventy-five dollar note. There's still a lot of this sort of thing around. It's got a lot of history attached to it. You can probably see on the note where it's got uh, General Francisco Villa underneath the denomination there. So what do we got in family that's interested in that sort of thing? So my grandpa is from the same, the same state as Pancho Villa, which is uh, Durango, right? Mm -hmm. And so everyone in that state claims that they are somehow related to Pancho Villa. So somehow it is claimed that he is my great, great uncle or something. So. And they both like tequila? They both <laughs> love tequila, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> okay, you also have an eight reales. This is a Mexican cap and ray eight real produced in Mexico from 1824 with the hook neck on the back up until 1897. So these cap and ray eight reals circulated all over the world. This was legal tender in the United States. This was legal tender in China. In fact, China at that time didn't have any silver mines or, or any method of production that producing their own specie, their own coins. And so this was Chinese coins at that point in time. They produced some coins, but not that they used for banking type practices for money exchange. And this was the favored one. They had US coins, they had British coins, different kinds of coins, but the Chinese used this as their currency in those in those years. What kind of value now? These coins, and this is a circulated eight real. Uh, this coin is worth eh, eighty dollars, ninety dollars. It's a hundred and thirty years old, and they're they're interesting pieces of history and art.